So we continue our sermon series on these Wednesday nights to co- complement our teaching on the book of Acts on Elisha. If you've been with us, this is now the seventh message. And this message, miracle, is Elijah, or Elisha, who made the axe head float. I don't know if you've heard this story, but the axe head fell into the water, and Elijah did a miracle through God's power, and he made the axe head float. And so one of our deacons, um, Keith, where you at, Keith? Uh, where you at? He brought this. I think he, his great, great, great grandpa owned this right here. And he's, he brought this in. And I don't know too much. By the way, I don't know if you know this or not, but I don't have an axe to grind. Okay, tonight, I just don't have an axe to grind. So this is the axe handle, and this is the axe head. This is the story of Elisha, who did a miracle with a man who is desperate before God. And I just want to tell you, maybe you come here tonight, you say, I need a miracle. You've come to the right place. God works and does amazing things when we pray and believe him for it. So this is the story. The company of the prophet said to Elisha, look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? Won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha said, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron ax head fell out of the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried out, it was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. First, I'd like you to see from the scripture, when God is moving, there will be growing pains. When God is moving in your life or in a church, there will be growing pains. If you remember back maybe in your teenage years, I remember in the eighth grade, I was growing fast I was playing basketball a lot on concrete and my legs would just be in pain. I'm like, dad, there's something wrong with my legs. He he said, son, there's nothing wrong. It's just a season of your life and it's called growing pains. It kind of just, it it stretches or stresses your, your legs. Now, as you get older, you don't have growing pains, you have back pain. Someone say amen to that, right there. You say, well, what was the problem? So let me just say this, when God's spirit begins to move, that's usually a tractional. And what was happening, this company of prophets, these men or women of God wanted to be close to Elisha and they were running out of space to be close. And like, so they had to go into a building project, if you will. Look what it says again in verse one. Look, the place where we meet with you is too small. So they needed like a meeting room and I'm guessing they needed like like barracks or they needed like dorms because it was too far for them to come and they wanted to be close to Elisha and so they needed to go into a building program. And if you don't know by now, we, you and I know, we're in a building program. We've actually been in a building program for a year and a half. Valesburg kind of started us going and we're now in a building program and anytime God is moving, There will be growing pains because things are stretching. I tell all of our staff, all of our ministries, we're in a new season and we're being stretched and we're growing and there will be growing pains. Not that we want to have them, but they do happen. My wife is the preschool and the principal of the MCA. And so her office is right there where the sanctuary expansion is. And they were kind of, they're making all this noise over there. And so like they're doing all the, uh, the, the drilling and she says, literally my desk is shaking. And I just kind of have to keep reminding everybody, listen, we're going through some growing pains, but it will get better as we continue to move forward. That's what was happening in this story. Elisha's people around him, people were wanting God and, and Elijah represented, he was the man of God. I just kind of want to walk you through really quickly. You know this, but I, we have to keep this in front of us. But this will be the end result here in the next couple months. We have, I think, what, 30, uh, 34 services. Do we have that up on the screen really quickly? This is the end result. This is it. Nope, that's not the end result. There it is. If that's the end result, we're in trouble. Come on, somebody. 
Anyway, right there. So that's what it will look like. You're, you're starting to see there's some dimension to it. But this is right where we're at right now. Now the next one. You have the next one? The one you had. There it is. That, this is where. So this is the stress that we have because now we're having to set up, break down, and all this stuff. Now, we had a deacon meeting on Monday night. And the deacon said, hey, we've not been in the, the building. And so we kind of broke in. And by the way, you're not allowed to go in there. But if you go in there at night, you can go in there. No, I'm just joking. We just went in there. And you could start to see there's like several classrooms, the restrooms, the lobby. The lobby ceiling is almost double of what it was before. It's really cool. And then you walk into the sanctuary, 300 new seats. You, you can start seeing it form. But there's, there's a sense that like a new building just doesn't pop up. It, there is like this growing pains to kind of get it. We saw the super beams. We saw where MCA would expand. It's really amazing. You say, well, why were they building during Elisha's time? They wanted to be closer to Elisha. Now, how the Spirit of God moved, especially in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God would come on individuals for a certain amount of time. And you could see in Elisha, he was performing miracles and people wanted to be close to that presence. My friends in modern America today, 2022, we need to pray that people will feel that sense of we've got to get back to God's house. We've got to get back to God's presence. It's almost like COVID became every person's excuse and we've gotten into a lot of bad habits, but there's only one place. The Bible says there's... But the Bible says better is one day in his house than a thousand elsewhere. Now, I'm, I'm supposed to say like with all these things, like we have empathy for people that can't be here. But there, if you, have you tried watching church online? It's not the same. Would you agree? It's not the same. We need to be in God's house. I read the scripture. I love the house where you live, a place where your glory dwells. We need a revival of people coming back to God and wanting to be around God's people and touch their hearts and their lives. Now look what it says. It says, they, they said to Elisha, they said, won't you please come with your servants? And he says, I will. And he went with them. Church isn't really just about you going to church. Hey, I was in church but you get to be with God's people. God's people touch our hearts. So they invited Elisha and they were inviting God's presence into their hearts and their life. That's what was happening. That's why they were building. I just wanted to go back to that picture of Valesburg because there's something dynamically about leadership. Watch this. Right here in the middle, and Pastor George and Yazelle, I know you're watching, but I'm so proud. And look at Brendan, he went gangster. I mean, he's all in. He's, he's gangster. Like, you know, he's like, yeah, oh, well, he's like, but look at this. They might not even know it, but their leaders were right in the middle. There's something when leaders go into the presence of God, people want to be around leaders. So they invited Elisha to say, hey, Elijah, would you come? Would you come and be a part of the middle of this? Yeah. So if you're a leader or you want to be a leader, you can't leave from the, like, the back. You got to be positive. You got to be in the middle of it. You got to be worshiping. You got to be praying. And yes, there's going to be growth points, but that is the dynamic of what's happening. And you and I need to be involved in groups. You and I need to be in serving because really what this is all about is that Elisha's guys that were around him, they were preparing for the future. They weren't, they weren't rich. Because they weren't talking about gold and silver. They were just talking about these poles that were going to put together. They need a place over their head. But they wanted to be in God's presence. But just because you're in God's presence doesn't mean everything is going to go smooth. But when God is moving, there will be growing pains. Now listen, you could choose to move forward in life or you could stop. If you stop, you'll have growing pains as well. You just won't grow. We had to keep growing with our nursery, with our kids' space. I don't know if you know this, but we had three services. If we would have just stayed, we'd have been in trouble and that would just, we lost half of our staff. As you move forward, it's not always easy, but there's something wonderful as you move forward in Jesus' name. Here's number two. God cares about the details of your life or the church or a building program. And this is what happened. This is the miracle as they were drawing close to God. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell off and into the water. 
Now notice the expression, oh no, my Lord, he cried out, it was borrowed. What they, I did some like teach, uh, studying on this. It was probably a poor man because he didn't have his own tools. So the ax head fell off into the deep water and he begins to think about the finances. It's not mine. I'm already poor. I might be working to pay for something. And now the thing that was gonna help me or get to me to where it needs to go, I'm in trouble. And the first expression that he does, he cries out, he goes, oh no, my Lord. If you're in trouble today, call on the Lord. Call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and I will honor you. Here's another one. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Do you, do you, ever, do you ever think about this? Does God care about like the little details in your life? So maybe you're working in your backyard and your lawnmower kind of messes up and you say, God, would you help me? Do you, does God care about that? Or maybe you're two thirds a little bit. You say, man, I need to find a good dentist. Does, should we pray about that? Or maybe your kid's having some struggles at school or maybe you're learning kind of going slow in math or science or whatever. You say, you know what? I just need to go talk to it. Or does God say, cast all your cares upon him? I wanna tell you, he cares about all the little details. He knows what's going on and you can trust him with every little thing, including what seems to be so minor, he can make an ax head float. Cast all your cares upon him. So you say, well, pastor, you know, you, you got a lot going on and God, you know, he's got a lot going on. Does God really care about my little details, my little life? The answer is yes. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. The first thing he did was he, he called on the Lord. He, I need help. And he was desperate. And I listen, God sees the gas prices. God knows about the housing. He knows about the challenges. What are we to do? We're to call on his name. Now notice this. He just didn't let the ax head just fall and say, oh, mistake. And he goes, tells his friend, hey man, sorry. He actually cared about somebody else's property. This, this is very practical about caring for your property and other people's property. I need to tell you a quick story. We had a small group yesterday. I want to show you with the Fogo de Chao in Philadelphia. Watch this. This is the guys right here. If you missed it, you missed it. Let me explain what happened. We took a picture. This was after, if I'm not mistaken. This was after. We had a great meal. It's a little expensive. It's like 50 bucks per meal, but it's all you can eat. And you feel God when you eat that much meat. There is something that God does when you eat that much meat. I don't know what it is, but I felt peace inside of me. I felt joy that the world cannot give or take away. It was in me. And you know what happened? This was, this was amazing. We're all like reaching for our wallets. One of the brothers, you know what he did? He goes, I'm paying for everybody. And you know what I said to myself? We're going back again next Tuesday. This is awesome. We're doing this. Fogo to Chow in Philly. So what you have to do is you have to park in a little garage over the, under, just in the next corner. As we were coming out of the garage on the way in, Fogo de Chow, someone took a spray can, graffiti, and tagged up the whole side of the restaurant. Just destroyed, I guess, their property. I guess someone's gonna have to get out there and paint or whatever. You know, when the ax head like fell, you know what the first thing he does? He prays God, but he's also concerned about who he borrowed it from. And it's so easy to like live our lives about ourselves but really when it involves other people, we have to live our lives in such a way that our decisions really do impact other people. And that is called integrity. So like I work in the church and if you've ever done something nice for me, one of the things I do, I write thank you notes. So some of you gave me like Christmas, like a Christmas gift or card or my birthday, whatever. The very next day, the very next day, I always write a thank you note. If I wait too long, I'll forget. I just make a note and I write it. There's just something about living a life of gratitude. Uh, so I'll go buy stamps or whatever. Stamps cost like $900 each now too. Everything's way up. It's just like, but I, I remember in college, there was a guy that came, a preacher guy. He goes, your integrity needs to be that of a postage stamp. 
you'll be entrusted with different things and you might say, oh, I'll just use a church stamp to put it on my personal letter to say thank you to Hector and Luz Maldonado for the flan. So it's, not a big, it's only 50 cents, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal because that belongs to God. And your integrity, like who you are, what is yours and what people, that's so critical to your own life, property, what belongs. And so many people take advantage of a system, the system, or they'll, they'll take advantage of people. And this happens all the time in America. We take advantage of the poor. With skyrocket interest rates, they, they kind of get themselves in a, in a pickle. And the moment they can't, they default on it. And the, some people get rich off of the poor. And we don't talk about it, but I, I heard a statistic that 80% of the world's wealth comes from Christian Americans. And we just, if we just live our lives just anywhere else, like you just, you know, we have a huge responsibility to do what's right as it relates to other people and their property. The first thing he did, he says, oh no, that's my neighbor's or that's somebody else's and I gotta get that right because not, then if not, I have this problem. And you might not think it's a big deal, but like how you interact with your neighbors says everything about your Christianity. So sometimes, like this is really hard, especially businessmen, You'll, you'll get the wrong idea. You say, well, I'm looking for a worker. And you say, oh, I'm going to get a Christian worker in the church and they're guaranteed to be a good worker. It's not always the same true. You might go to church and you might worship the Lord, but that doesn't mean you're a good worker. I know Christians that steal time from people all the time. Some secular people that are not Christians, they outwork you and you lose your testimony. A Christian, we don't steal from from our employer, we don't steal time, we don't steal money, we don't steal respect or honor because it brings us honor when we always do the right thing. He calls on the name of the Lord and then he, has, he says, Elisha, I need help because it's not mine. He was a poor man, but he knew where to go and to get help from God. It was an issue of respect. And so, you know, King David said this, Lord, give me integrity of heart and also skillfulness of hand. Some people have such great skills, they're allowed to be a jerk. Listen, if you're a heart surgeon, well, I, listen, I guess you could cheat on your wife as long as you're a good heart surgeon, but you cannot be a good Christian if you're a jerk. You could also have great integrity, but if you don't have skillfulness of hands, you kind of mess up. You need to combine hard work and skill with your integrity, and that's what will get you the victory in Jesus' name. You say, I, you know, people don't respect me, I don't have a witness, I don't talk to anybody about the Lord, because you have to combine your hard work and your skill. And so all these things really do matter. You might have some detail in your life that God's working you on, you have to make a presentation tomorrow. You have to hire somebody. You have to send the email out or text or you have some financial transaction. I'll just, I'll just say to you, do what's right. If you do what's right, God's presence will go with you and those little details do matter to God and does influence your life. But you say, does God care about an ax head that floats in the water? The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. You got something going on in your life? You say, does that matter to God? Bring it to God. Let God do it. The Bible says, and my God will meet all of your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. God said he'll meet all of our needs. Now, in America, we have a lot of wants and we get those confused, but God said he'll meet all of our needs. And we say, God, we need you. My ax head flow, I need help. Does God care? Can God help? And the answer is yes. This is the end of the story. So far, this has been a pretty good message. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick and threw it on there, and he made the iron float. Miraculously, the iron is at the bottom of the lake, and all of a sudden, it comes to the top. God did a miracle. That's a great thing. Something's at the bottom, and God lifts it. Maybe your heart is at the bottom, and God lifts it. You have no hope right now, no hope. You give it to God and God just begins to lift it. You have no future. It's not feeling good. Like where we go from here? God is down here Say, God, I just need you. God has a way of taking something that just seems to be kind of yucky. It's not moving. We need God and God just has a tendency to be able to work it out and lift it up for his glory and his honor. Elijah cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. And this is what he says, lift it out, he said, then the man reached out his hand and took it. Whenever there's a miracle, 
there's always a next step. When God does a miracle, then you have a personal responsibility behind that miracle. So God has given us $3 million to move forward with the new building. What, what, do, I, what do we do? Pick up a chair and put it in there. Because it's not just, just going to happen on its own. Do you remember when Jesus healed the man? He says, but I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. The axe head rose to the top, and Elijah said, now grab it and go back to work. When there's a miracle, you have to work behind the miracle and to move forward. When Jesus heals the man or forgives the man, he says, take up the mat and move. So when God does great things in your life, you don't just kind of stay there. You take it and you move forward in Jesus' name. That becomes part of your story, and you trust God, and God gives you a full, powerful life in Jesus' name. So listen, do you have an ax head that's kind of in the water right now? Say, Pastor, man, there's, there's something going on right now. There's something in the water. I need the Lord. I need the Lord to do a miracle with my taxes. I'm behind. I have this broken relationship with a family member. It's deep down there, like it's deep in the water. You know, maybe you try to put your, you rolled up your sleeve. It's, it's deeper than you can grab it. But God can take something that seems to be hopeless and lift it to the top. As he lifts it, you grab a hold of it and you move forward in Jesus' name. That's when victories come as you trust the Lord. You say, well, that happened then. Can God do it now? Yeah, God's gonna do it. You say, is there growing pains? Yeah, we're preparing for the future. We're preparing that God would prepare us. You could hear it in my tone with young people. We're preparing. There's growth pains now, but you say, why? For the glory of the Lord. Why did God do that? Why did God keep that in the scripture? So we could preach about it and say, God can do the impossible. Would you stand with me in the Lord's presence? Doesn't seem like a big miracle. Lazarus coming out of the grave after three or four days, that seems to be bigger, just an ax head float. Just something small in your backyard, your sprinkler not working. You have a, a tire, a headlight that's not working. Something real small in your house, you know. You just need God to help you. God can resource you. He can meet all of your needs. Whatever's on your heart, he can give you. You need someone to help do your taxes. You need a new mechanic. You need a new dentist. You need God to help you. God will help you. He'll show you what to do if you'll trust him with every detail of your life. God's practical. God's real. He's faithful. And you can believe him for every detail of your life. He's real. So what's on your heart tonight? What's at the bottom of the river? What needs to be lifted up and God does it and you grab it and say, God, I, I needed this. I needed this little, I needed this to kind of move forward. I needed clarity. I needed wisdom. I needed a word. I needed a hope. I need direction. But God, it's heavy and it's down there. It has value. Iron in those days had value. And the value is at the bottom of the lake and we need a miracle to bring it back up. It could be somebody's soul it's down there. God wants to lift it up. All I know is God's real. And if you'll give it to him, cast your cares upon the Lord. Moms, you have concern about your kids, who their friends are, what they're doing in school, what are you going to do in summer camp? God cares about all of that. Give it to the Lord. He has a way of working it all out. Dad, you've got the weight of the world. You're trying to do right by your kids. All the finances, your taxes cost $12,000 a year. The cost of college is skyrocket. You're trying to fill up your gas tank and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't do it. And your heart is low and God says, cast your cares upon the Lord. He's got you. He's got you. But Elisha's men, they knew to be close to God. They knew to call. They knew where to go. And I'm just going to tell you, we need to keep, just keep calling on the Lord, keep trusting him for this building project so we can expand we need to believe God for Valesburg, that God would bless financially, God would bless whatever resources they need for the kingdom of God. There will be problems along the way, but God can take a problem and make it for his glory. Sometimes the ax head goes down so everybody can see what God is up to. I believe God is leading us into this place, to this moment, so he could believe, we could believe him for the impossible. You, give, you bring that to the Lord. Let God have his way in your life He's so faithful. I know I had you up here before, 
But I do want to just call you down and say, Lord, this seems so small, but I need some grace. I need some wisdom. I need some help. I believe the Lord is so faithful. We need to keep praying for our sanctuary expansion. We need to keep praying for the strength of Valesburg Assembly. We need to pray for every young person in the state of New Jersey. We need God. We need to be in God's presence. We need to be close to God. And I want to invite you one more time around this altar to believe God for the big things in your life and the small things in your life. Great is his faithfulness. If you need a miracle, you need the iron to rise to the top. I'm telling you, around this altar, God can do it. Would you, could, would you, would you come down with me? And we're going to pray one more time, and then we'll let you out of here. Jesus, you're so faithful. Jesus, you're so faithful. Jesus, you're so faithful. You don't have to give me all the details, but there's probably something that's on your mind. Everyone has something on their mind. And don't, don't get into the specifics. Don't say, I need an extra large shirt, you know, to go with my blue shirt. Don't you just say, I just need a, I just need like a resource or something. Don't get into all the, but just tell, I think there's something to say, Lord, you care about everything about my life. Our relationship with God is not just in the church. It's in the details, it's at the lake, it's everywhere, God's faithful. So would you just kind of yell, tell me what you're believing God for. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we're gonna pray by faith. Just yell, tell me what you're believing God for right now. Go ahead. Just yell it out. I'm sorry. A medical miracle, physically, yeah. Growth in your business. Go ahead. Your brother's health, yes. Go ahead, just say it out loud. Protection for our kids. Protection for our kids. We need God to speak to their minds. Yeah, so you stand in faith for them and God could hear our prayer, yeah. What else do you believe in God? Very, very specific. Go ahead, yell it out, go ahead. That's the best one. How many have people in your life that need Jesus? Oh, we're talking about, hey, an ax head flow, but the other side of it is they're spending time with the prophet because they want to change the world for Jesus. So God cares about the small things, but the most important thing is the salvation. We, we keep all that. What else? What do you believe in God for? Direction? Yeah. My brother's actually given some words at a funeral. So yeah, the very, God can help us in that. Lord, he'll give us what to say. What else? Bree, what are you praying for? Wisdom and a car. That's why you're up here. Don't act like you're not up here. I know why you're up here. Like, I need a car for college. Am I right? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's my kid. If you're watching online, this is our last broadcast. Anyway. What's that? Okay. She needs a car. She needs some luggage. I'm just joking. That's great. I, I, I get caught because like one time someone actually gave us a car and this is like the greatest thing. My kids were like, dad, you should ask for all this stuff from the God. I'm like, no, we don't do that from the congregation. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but she is looking for like an SUV. I mean, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Not really, but kind of. Anyway, anybody else? What do you believe in God for? Do you see how it's, it's important to be specific before the Lord? If you, have, if you need something, tell him, Lord, I'm looking. Because like sometimes we are so vague, but no, Lord, the ax head right there, I need it. And it could be finances or it could be direction or so we pray. If you need the Lord like this, we just lift up your hands. Lord, around this altar, we really do need you. Our families really do need you. My brother, Pat and Marianne, Lord, they, they stand in the gap for other people, clients that they're trying to help and get into houses and all these things, Lord. And the market's crazy, interest rates, everything's crazy, but God, you're bigger. You know every detail. I pray, God, you give them supernatural wisdom, discernment, what to help or say or not to say. Pray for my sister, Lord God, who really is believing God for her salvation of her friends and family. I pray all of us, Lord, you would fill your house with a whole bunch of new saved people, that we would teach people, Lord, how to be devoted followers of Jesus. Bless my, my brother with wisdom or guidance for his future. There's many people that are praying, they need resources, cars, open doors. They might just need better jobs or a, a bonus, Lord, with the gas prices, Lord. You bless your people. 
I do pray, Lord, once again, for the minds of young people. I pray your house would be filled with young people, especially coming into the fall, that just wanna be in God's house, wanna be in God's word. They care more about the Lord and the kingdom than the things of this world. I pray, God, you set a revival with young people. God bless us, Lord. God, we need you. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, we love you. We need you. Lord, I pray about the little details in our life. We're gonna go home tonight. We're gonna sit down. Some people are gonna turn on the basketball game. They're gonna go outside. They have a dog. The door might be open. The garage door might not work. The car might not start up. The air conditioning might not work. Something might happen in the yard around and the words might come back, how you care about every detail of our life. Nothing is too big or nothing is too small. You're faithful in every area of our life. We trust you raising children. We trust you on the daily grind. Lord, we need you in Newark and Marlton. We need you on the details. Lord, this church needs you. We feel like right now you told us to be still and know that you're God. We're waiting on you for the next step. You've gotten us here. It is hard for us in the flesh to wait, but you're preparing us for the next step. When we walk into that new sanctuary, God, we're all gonna know that you did it for your glory, for your honor. These are crazy times where you're preparing our hearts. And so Lord, we pray you go before, before us in Jesus' name, amen. It's 7.58, that's a good time. Let me just give you a couple things to do. Acts chapter six for this week. It's always helpful if you read. So we're studying the book of Acts, Acts chapter six, and it's graduation Sunday. Please be praying. And I think Pastor Jamal was really emphasizing it. Even during the summer, be in church. If you go away on vacation, at least go there. Go, to, go, go, don't just miss church. And then if you kind of do, then you have to be online. Don't get into this bad habit. Be in church, tithe. When you're in, or like if you're going away, you don't like, oh, I don't get to tithe. Tithe faithfully. And then the third thing, invite people to church. There needs to be a resurgence of, this is where we need to be. It's almost like COVID hit and we're all just kind of sitting around. We can't just take it in. We need God. We need to invite people. Trust God moving forward. Amen. And there's a ton of new people. There's a ton of new people. Like I'll be like, like who are you? Welcome people, welcome people. Let them come in, right? Let's do it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you. Help us with the chairs tonight. 34 more services. Come on, somebody. Thanks for joining us on Wednesday night tonight at our United Prayer Service. We hope it was a time of just drawing closer to God, and we can't wait to see you this upcoming Sunday at Marlton Assembly of God in person or online at 9 or 1045 or live at Valesburg at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, see you then.